God's just been doing some awesome things in my life. I don't know about you. His word is just becoming so alive to me now as I read it. It's been awesome. Reading in Joshua chapter 6 this week. People of Israel come to the city of Jericho, and they don't know how they're going to get through. The Lord tells them, march. Six days. One time around the city for six days straight. Don't say a word. Just march. Joshua leads the people. Then they get to day seven. He says, this time I want you to march seven times. Don't say a word until the end. He made this promise. He said, once you march around the city the seventh time, I want you to shout, and I will give you the city. This is word for us today, amen. Some of you, you've been marching for a long time. But listen. You're on day seven now. And maybe you don't realize how many more laps you got to go, but let me tell you, just keep marching. Just keep marching. The walls will come down. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me yet. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass Yes, it will My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your
I see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I see you do it again. I see you do it again. I see, I see you do it again. promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands oh this is my confidence you never fail your promise still stands oh great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. And I never will forget that you never fail me yet. And I never will forget that you never fail me. Sing this hymn with us. Sing it. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need in thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. One more time, sing it out. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need in thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faith. Great is. Great is thy faith. Great is. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord good praise in this house today. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated this morning. Again, we want to welcome you into our worship service and say thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Also, I want to uh, thank uh, everyone that works behind the scenes to... Uh, to get things accomplished that need to be accomplished. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is so faithful and we are so blessed. Uh, we want to welcome those that are going to be watching online with us and participating in our worship service through that experience. Amen. I want to go to the Word of God today and I, I just want to kind of... Uh, Go back to uh, Philippians, where the Lord seems to have drawn me to today, or for this morning's message, back to Philippians chapter 4. And I want to talk about this today. I want to talk about this. Confidence in Christ. Confidence in Christ. Amen. See, it, it's confidence in Christ that enables us to be more than conquerors. Enables us to live victorious. Amen. Confidence in Christ. We're going to look at uh, the scripture, Philippians 4, verse 13. And we'll get more into the 
context of that in a moment. But it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Now, a better rendering of that would be, I can do all things in Christ. It's that intimate connection with Christ that enables me to get through whatever I've got to get through. And again, there's some people going through some pretty tough times pretty tough situations right now. Amen. And as we go back to the book of Philippians and try to plunge into this, I've got to say again, what an incredible and helpful book Philippians is. I mean, think about this. Think about this. It contain, In just chapter 4 alone, it contains, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. And then in, it says in verses uh, 6 and 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. <laughs> Give it to Him. It's a little bit what Peter said, isn't it? Cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. Amen. And what does he say in verse 7? And the peace of God, which passes or surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's something about being in Christ and Christ being in you. Amen. Now, I'm going to be talking about this in uh, verses 6 and 7 down the road here in a week or two, and I've entitled it, and again, it's, uh, Jonathan, I've come too late in the game to come up with too many original sermon titles or, or things like that, and I ran across and I loved it. it I want to preach on this, the great exchange, the great exchange, and it's going to be based on Philippians 6 and 7, amen. See, the thing of it is, I can exchange my anxiety for God's peace. Is that not a great exchange? We can exchange our anxiety for God's peace. Think about it. We get to exchange our worry for God's peace, and it takes place through prayer. Hallelujah. See, what about this? Worry about nothing. What? Worry about nothing. How's that possible? Some of you've got stuff going on that weighing on you and it's, it's robbing your appetite, robbing you of rest at night, the ability to sleep because of what you're experiencing and you're up there telling me worry about nothing. Yes, you can exchange your worries for God's peace through prayer. Worry about nothing, how's it possible? By praying about everything. Amen. Mark Batterson in his book, Draw the Circle, the 40-Day Prayer Challenge, writes, and this is big, friends, this is significant, prayer is the difference between the best you can do and the best God can do. When I pray to God, it releases the best God can do in my life. Amen. See, now for all of that, I go back to my sermon title this morning. It's got to be based upon a confidence in Christ. And when I have that confidence in Christ, I can worry about nothing because I can pray about everything. And when I pray, pray, I'm sorry, when I pray, prayer is the difference between the best I can do and the best God can do. I don't need the best I can do. I need the best God can do. Is there anybody here today? Yeah, Pastor, I need that. I need that. I need the best God can do in my life. Amen? 
listen, he goes on to say, if we, if we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will do the heavy lifting. Amen. How many of you tired of carrying that load? Carrying that weight? Carrying that responsibility? How many of you? When you hit your knees, the Holy Spirit comes along and does the heavy lifting in your life. If we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will reveal things that can only be discovered in the presence of God. See, God can see things I can't see. God knows things I don't know. But when I talk to God, God reveals things in His presence. There's no other way for me to discover. If we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will give us God ideas. Not good ideas. God ideas. Ryan talked about it this morning in leading that last song. Whenever they were confronted with the walls of Jericho, they no doubt stood and stared at this overwhelming obstacle keeping them from attaining the promise, provision God had made for them. There they were, looking at this, staring at this. What are we going to do? Thank God they had, a, at that time, a commander-in-chief that had talked to God, and God had talked to him, and didn't give him a good idea, but gave him a God idea. And a God idea doesn't always make sense to us. But again, God sees and knows and is able to, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that's working in us. Amen. What did they do? Now, how many of you would have considered this to be foolish? Start marching. Don't talk amongst yourself. Be quiet. Just march. Think about God. Think on God. Think on God things. March. Six days, one time a day. Seventh day, and I want to change it up, God says. I want you to march seven times today. Again, I want you to be still until that last time. And when you march and you, miss, and you hit that seventh time at the conclusion of that, I want you to shout, for I have, before you see it, before you experience it, I've already promised it, and your shout will reveal that you believe what I said I do. Amen. See, some of us can't praise God until after the fact. That's not really praise. Praise. Real praise that reveals faith praises God in the face of. Not after the fact. Amen. You see, when Paul wrote the letter to Philippi, to the believers there, the Philippian church, he wrote it from a prison, very hostile environment. And it is from that he says, I want to thank God because you have took up my cause and been charitable in giving to me and helping me. Not that I speak in want, because I've learned to be content. Whatever my circumstances are, whatever my condition is, whatever the state I'm in right now, I can be full and happy, I can be empty and happy. Doesn't matter, none of that matters. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. It's not about my external circumstances. It's not about the environment that's surrounding me. It's about the one who is in me. I can do all things through Christ or in Christ. Because he strengthens me. Amen. And then he says as he winds forward, uh, chapter 4 down, he says, And... And, it's a connection, a conjunction. And, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. I like that. That's significant. There's nothing on earth can compare to what he has in heaven. 
the resources that he has for us in heaven. Amen. So therefore, the theme of Philippians is joy. And we've learned, hopefully we've been learning, real joy doesn't come from our circumstances. Real joy comes from our relationship with Jesus Christ. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. My joy is not based upon certain factors in my life or the absence of certain factors in my life does not take my joy from me. Nothing can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Doesn't matter where I'm at, what's going on, how hard or challenging or difficult my life is right now. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ and I have confidence in Him that the anchor will hold no matter how strong the storm may be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them. I know we're spread out. But you've got to talk a little louder. It's okay. <laughs> Joy is an inside job. It doesn't come from what's going on around me. It comes from the one who is in me. Amen. Amen. You see, joy is an inside job reserved for those who have a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now how many understand today there is no immunization from distractions, discouragement, despair, doubt, depression, drudgery, Disillusionment. There, there's not that. Uh, 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 there's no immunity from those moments where you feel as though you're drowning in your circumstances. Does there anybody understand what I'm talking about today? There's no immunity from that to battle these moods or these sensations. Is a common experience. Most of us are familiar with, especially those today that are honest. Amen. That's why I believe the letter Paul wrote to the Philippian believers is so important for believers of all generations. To me, again, I'm talking, this is me. To me, some significant reasons we find behind Paul writing this letter is to equip to encourage, to inspire believers to press on in the development of their faith. Look at somebody and say, don't quit now. This can be your seventh day, your seventh time. Go dip seven times. He wouldn't have been healed if he'd have stopped at six. But the seventh don't quit too soon to press on in the development of their faith, to press on to discover new levels of confidence in Christ, to press on toward spiritual maturity. I'd have you do this, but I'm afraid you'd make somebody mad, but you need to look at maybe somebody and say it tongue-in-cheek, of course. You may need to grow up. Amen. There comes a time we've got to put away childish things. Amen. One of the reasons that so many today sitting on church pews are easily offended is because they are spiritually immature. They're still babies and they need to grow up. And when they do, they'll be a force to be reckoned with. I'm preaching okay today, friends. To press on. To reach the end of the race. Amen. 
I've shared this before, but back in elementary school and high school, I ran cross country. There are times, Jimmy, at the end of that, and, and then it was like in high school, I think it was three and a half miles we had to run. I don't know of a time I ever crossed the finish line first. But I don't know of a time that I never, not, I didn't cross the finish line. And the only way you cross the finish line is if you keep in the race. And I'm encouraging somebody. That's why Paul said, look at all that going against Paul. Not just, it's, it's life's working against Paul. You know how easy it could have been for Paul to become bitter and angry and turned on God? God, I've been preaching for you. I've been serving you. And look at the treatment I've received. Look at the place that I am in right now. Is this what it is? Is it worth it? He was not a spiritually immature believer. He was fully developed in his faith. Irregardless of where I find myself, God's faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. I want to encourage somebody like the Apostle Paul to, to press on to reach the end of the race, to receive the heavenly prize for which God through Jesus Christ is calling us. I can, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Now, we're in a spiritual battle, aren't we? We're engaged in spiritual warfare. We've got two or three people right now that Darla and I are working with, trying to counsel and pray for, trying to help, and I've told them this is not a physical battle. There may be physical issues, but it's not a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. The devil's wanting to discourage you. The devil's wanting to defeat you. The devil's wanting to bring you down. Now, I talked last week about Shamgar, and Shamgar picked up, picked up the ox goat, and he slew 600 Philistines. And I said at that time, and I'm going to make sure there's no misunderstanding as to what I was saying. He took what was at hand to, and used it to defend what was his. And I said, we need to take what's at hand. And I want you to understand something. I was not talking about uh, the, 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 the physical or natural. I'm talking about... What God makes available to us, we need to take it up and use it as a weapon to slay what's working against us. Amen? Amen. In fact, Paul wrote these letters to, uh, uh, to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. One translation says it like this, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Amen. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. They're not carnal. They're not of the flesh. He goes on to say, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Amen. You see, listen, when God goes to war, He usually chooses the most unlikely soldiers. Hands them the most unusual, unconventional weapons and accomplishes through them the most unpredictable results. Amen. Amen. Again, for example, God gave Shamgar an ox goad. And with it, he killed 600 opposing forces. Jael used a hammer and a tent peg to kill a captain. Gideon routed the whole Midianite army with only pitchers and torches as weapons. Samson slaughtered a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. Now here they are, fully prepared, fully dressed, military force. There's a thousand of them. And what does Samson grab? He grabs the jawbone of a donkey. And begins to sling that thing through the air. Until a thousand lie dead before him. What made the difference? The same thing that makes the difference in our lives. The anointing of God. Amen. And what about David? David, a little shepherd boy, killed the giant Goliath with a stone hurled from a shepherd's sling. 
Amen. See Ephesians chapter 6. In 2 Corinthians 10, he said the weapons of our warfare, or I'm sorry, he said the, uh, that, 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 that we uh, uh, wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm getting my scriptures confused, I'm sorry. He said uh, that, that uh, the weapons we fight with are not carnal, they are not of the flesh. And in Ephesians chapter 6, he lets us know that, that we're not in a battle against flesh. So weapons of the flesh won't do any good in the battle that we are engaged in. We are engaged in a spiritual battle against the powers of darkness and evil forces. Therefore, we have to fight with spiritual weaponry by putting on the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with the gospel preparation of peace, the, the, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of the faith. Amen. Put it on. Why does it say put it on? Because it doesn't come natural to us. We have to yield to the spirit of God and put it on. Amen. So spiritual warfare engaging involves engaging our adversary through what? Through prayer. Through praise. And through the promises of God. Which are found where? In the word of God. Which is what? The sword of the spirit. So we engage our adversary through prayer. Through praise. And through the promises of God. I want you to see this now. And we'll have it on the screen. A promise from God. Is a declaration we can depend on. With absolute confidence. He keeps His word. When God makes a promise, He keeps His word. Amen. A promise from God is a declaration or a statement we can depend on with absolute confidence. He'll be there when He says He will be there. He'll always be on time. Amen. So what are the promises? What are some of the promises? I'll just go through these quickly. First of all, God's presence. Amen? God's presence. I will never leave you. Hebrews 13 and 5. That's God's presence. That's what we have. I'll never leave you. That's a promise that we have. Second of all, God's protection. Genesis 15 and 1. I am your shield. God's power. Isaiah 41 and 10. I will strengthen you. God's provision. Again, Isaiah 41 and 10. I will help you. Praise God, if God be for us. Does that not take on a whole greater significance when we understand the promises? He said, I won't leave you. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be your strength. I, I will help you. I'll assist you. Then I begin to understand why it was so big for the New Testament to tell me that if God be for me, who? Can be against me. Amen. See, Paul's confidence to conquer was based on what he knew to be true about God. That's, that's where his confidence came from. His confidence came from what he knew to be true about God. Amen. Now, I want you to see this with me, okay? I want you to see this. One of the most reliable indicators of how fruitful a Christian will be in life is their level of confidence in Christ. Sometimes, as Mark Batterson, and, I, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here and making it my words, but sometimes we have to do uh, ask ourselves and answer this. Maybe, maybe that's the way I should say it. Maybe we need to answer this. How big is my God? How big's my God? Is God? Well, let me word it like this: Are my prob? Do I do I perceive that my problems are bigger than God, or do I know that God's bigger than my problems? That makes all the difference between defeat and victory. How big's your God? Is the God of the Scripture? Is He God of your own conception? Amen. 
Amen. Listen, I've known people. I've known people with impressive uh, education, talent, skills, family, pedigree, and yet opportunities who never fulfilled God's plan for their lives. They had all that working for them, yet they never fulfilled God's plan for their lives. Why? Basically this, self-doubt. Low self-confidence. When I understand how much God believes in me, believe in God, what did he say? What did he say? He said, I can do all things in Christ whose strength. I can do this. Amen. Self-doubt undermines the ability to become the person God creates them to be. And on the other hand, I've seen people who lacked impressive credentials achieve great success because they learned to rely on God's power working through them. They didn't rely on their pedigree. They didn't rely on their financial security. They relied on the power of God working. They were able to achieve all that God had for them. Now, I know I need to hurry. The early church leaders displayed an anchored confidence in the Lord's ability to empower them, to protect them, and to provide for them. Amen. It's the only way they could have endured what they endured. Can I just be honest with you guys for just a few more moments? Christians in America don't understand real persecution for their faith. You know, maybe somebody will talk about you at work. There might even be some people who will lose their job if they find out you're a Christian. But come on, I, I'm talking about real Christian persecution like, like it's going on in many different parts of this world right now for their faith. Being put on trial simply because of having Christ they're put on trial, and some executed. That's persecution. We get somebody that snickers at us when we pray at a restaurant. And we become concerned about praying next time. I'm okay today, friends. The early church leaders displayed an anchored confidence in the Lord's ability. He empowers me. He protects me. He provides for me. That's why we can endure. Amen. I know I need to, to close, but I want you to hear me. Hebrews 10 and 35. Hebrews 10 and 35. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward. Confidence in Christ will get you through your stuff. Do you hear me? Don't throw that away. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on Christ. He still makes a way where there seems to be no way. How many of you believe God can still move mountains? How many of you believe God can still part the waters? How many of you still believe that God can do what the Bible tells us He can do? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time we stop being defeated. And it's time we start living the overcoming, victorious life. Amen, Jimmy. Thank you. Pray big because we've got a big God to pray to. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Promised my wife that I wouldn't get into any of the stories and the details of stories of people's lives, and I won't today. But I'm telling you, friends, 
that if you only knew, there are some people, I, I look at darling, some of the stuff that we've been through, and I think we've been through nothing. When I begin to look at other uh, people's lives and what they're experiencing right now, I mean, the, the turmoil, the, 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 the destruction that seems to be taking, I'm not talking about physical, I'm talking about that mental destruction, I'm talking about that emotional uh, destruction that's, that's going on in their minds and hearts right now. Some people have been slammed hard. Some people right now, their heads still reverberating because of what they've been hit with in life. Don't throw your confidence in Christ away. Because that confidence in Christ is what will get you through. Enable you to conquer. Enable you to be more than a conqueror. Jimmy, you're right. Let's pray big today. Let, 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 let's not diminish the size of our God. Let's not, let's not make God our size. Let's let God be God. God, show us your glory. I wonder if you'd do something with me. I want to come back to this message. I've got more I want to share with you at a later date. But I, I want you to bow your head right where you're at today. I want you to just think for a moment. I want you to think for a moment right now. And I want you to uh, try to clear your mind the best that you can. And I want you to think about how big your God is. It's okay to think about your problems. It's okay to think about your trials. It's okay to think about your, your, your challenges. But remember this. None of them are bigger than the God that you serve. You serve a big God. Therefore, you can pray big prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just take a moment. I'm just, just a moment right where you're at. And say, okay, God. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to give it all to you today, God. I'm going to keep marching until I see the walls crumbling, coming down. I'm not giving up on myself. I'm not giving up on you. I lay hold of this promise today. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've read the book. I've read the Bible. I see how big my God is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is, God. Here it is. Hallelujah. Zach, I know you're looking for a song, but I, I tell you what I'd like for you to do, if you can, possibly. If you can possible, I want you to lead us in that last song. Is that okay, guys? The walls. Hallelujah. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. Still marching, but you're going to continue. Because confidence is, is not in what you see. Confidence is in the one you know. I may still see walls in front of me, but I've got confidence in the Christ that's in me. And I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Don't throw that confidence away. It has a great reward. Hold on. Stay in the race. You may hit a section of hurdles right now. But God, through Christ, will enable you to jump those hurdles. Stay in the race. Stay in the race. You can put the song up. That last song. Would you stand with me?
Heavenly Father, all the needs that are here today, they're yours. All the needs here today are yours. All the battles, all the burdens, it's all yours. We may not be able to, but our confidence isn't in our ability. Our confidence is in the Christ that's in us. For we rely on your abilities and your resources today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Remember, you can give online at brookportcog.com or you can mail your gift to the address below. Bye!